you will meet three main types of equilibrium constant in this book. They're all related, but differ in the way the constant is defined and are used in different circumstances. You will probably have already met the equilibrium constant Kc in your previous course at school or college. Kc is defined in terms of the concentrations of the reactants and products when the reaction has come to equilibrium. For a general reaction, A plus B goes to C plus D, the equilibrium constant Kc equals the concentration of the product C raised to the power small c, its stoichiometric coefficient in the balanced equation, multiplied by the concentration of product D raised to small d, its coefficient in the equation. So products on the top. These concentrations are divided by the concentration of reactant A raised to the power small a multiplied by the concentration of reactant B raised to the power small b. So reactants on the bottom. These are concentrations at equilibrium and sometimes EQ is written in the expression. For example, the concentration of reactant A may be written like this. But generally, the EQ is just understood. In the reaction of nitrogen and hydrogen to form ammonia, for example, Kc is equal to the concentration of the product ammonia squared because two moles of ammonia are formed in the reaction divided by the concentration of nitrogen just one mole of nitrogen reacts multiplied by the concentration of hydrogen raised to the power three because three moles of hydrogen reacts the units of Kc depend on the particular reaction. Concentrations are usually given in moles per decimeter cubed. For the ammonia formation reaction, you can work out the units as shown here. The concentration of ammonia on the top line is squared, so the units on the top line are moles per decimeter cubed squared. On the bottom line, concentration of nitrogen moles per decimeter cubed, concentration of hydrogen moles per decimeter cubed to the power 3. You can cancel moles per decimeter cubed squared on the top line with moles per decimeter cubed squared on the bottom line, which leaves 1 over moles per decimeter cubed squared which is equivalent to moles to the minus 2 decimeters to the power 6. For a different reaction, the concentration units in the expression for Kc may cancel out. So in this case, Kc would have no units. The important thing to remember is that Kc is a constant at a given temperature. If you change any of the concentrations at equilibrium at constant temperature, the concentrations of reactants and products will adjust to give a new position of equilibrium with the same value of Kc. But if you change the temperature, the concentrations of reactants and products will adjust to give a new position of equilibrium with a different value of Kc. So you must always quote a temperature along with a value of Kc. You may also have met previously the equilibrium constant Kp, which is defined in terms of the partial pressures of the reactants and products 
when the reaction has come to equilibrium. Kp is particularly useful when the reaction takes place in the gas phase, though Kc can also be used in such cases. The equilibrium constant Kp takes the same form as that for Kc, but with partial pressures instead of concentrations in the expression. Products are on the top line, reactants on the bottom as before, each partial pressure raised to the stoichiometric coefficient in the equation. Like Kc, Kp is constant at a particular temperature. So, for the ammonia reaction, Kp is equal to the partial pressure of the product ammonia squared divided by the partial pressure of nitrogen multiplied by the partial pressure of hydrogen raised to the power 3. The units of Kp depend on the particular reaction and the units used to measure the pressure. For the ammonia reaction, if the pressures are measured in pascals, the units of Kp are pascals to the minus 2. If the pressures are measured in atmospheres, the units of Kp are atmospheres to the minus 2. Kp and Kc are related because at constant temperature the partial pressure of a gas is proportional to its concentration. This is discussed at the bottom of page 62. For a general reaction taking place in the gas phase, Kp equals Kc times Rt, where R is the gas constant, T is the temperature, raised to the power delta N, where delta N is the change in the number of moles of gas on going from reactants to products. Later in the book, in chapter 15, you will meet a third equilibrium constant, the thermodynamic equilibrium constant K sometimes called the standard equilibrium constant and written like this. It takes the same form as Kc and Kp but is defined in terms of thermodynamic activities rather than concentrations or pressures. So for the general reaction A plus B going to C plus D, here is the expression for K, where italic A represents an activity. Products on the top, reactants on the bottom, raised to the appropriate powers as before. Activities are defined in chapter 14 on page 685. For a gaseous reactant A, for example, its activity, A, equals its partial pressure divided by standard pressure, P standard, where P standard equals 1 bar. The advantage is that activities have no units and hence thermodynamic equilibrium constants also have no units. You don't need to use the thermodynamic equilibrium constant in this chapter, just be aware of its existence. You will use it extensively later in the book.